dude, sit down, watch this video until the end, because today I'm going to show you a really easy way to make a polyvinyl chloride machine gun that can shoot up to 20 rounds per second. The materials are easy to find and likely available in your city. I'll be using two types of polyvinyl chloride pipes. One type has a diameter of 25 millimeters and the other type has a diameter of 20 millimeters. These are the most common pipes you can find. These pipes will be cut in various ways. I'll leave a cutting chart on the side. For the 25 one, we'll use 6 meters, and for the 21, we'll use 1 meter and 10. Besides the pipe itself, from the 25 family, I'm going to use 3 T-type connectors, 1 cross, and 3 elbows. From the 20 family, I'm going to use 2 elbows and 3 couplings. I'll also use a can with a metal bottom and cardboard sides. I'll need 6 meters of strong wire. I'm using waxed thread, but any strong wire will do. I'll assemble everything using polyvinyl chloride glue. And hot glue. And our projectiles. More elastic is better. I'll make the machine gun's drum, the spinning part. Not sure if it's called a drum on a machine gun, but it is on a revolver. The drum's center will be a 0 0.984251968503937 inches x13 inches pipe. Around it, I'll put 1.9685 inches long pipes with elastic bands. There are six here, I put them on this side, and six here on the other side. I'm going to line them up nicely and leave about five centimeters on each end. The pipes on the table are already sanded. When cutting yours, sand them too for better glue adhesion and painting. To join these pipes, I'm going to put hot glue inside here. Remember, this part here will be the core of the machine gun drum. I can't put glue here, okay? Otherwise, it will get in the way of the next step. One important thing before the glue dries. On the outside of this, I'm going to put pipes like this. So it's important that these gaps here between the pipes stay aligned. I'm going to remove the rubber bands here because now it's stuck. And around this structure, I'm going to put 12 pipes of 33 centimeters. Of course, if I use rubber bands, this task gets kind of weird. It gets a little easier to do. Before gluing, I have to secure this here very well. Look how nice this is. And now comes a rather thankless task, which is trying to glue this here without getting glue on the outside. When you're absolutely sure the glue has hardened, you can remove the rubber bands and start making the cuts that will keep the rubber bands from coming loose when you shoot. You're going to make two V-shaped cuts at each end of the pipe and the rubber band will fit in just like you see here. One important thing is to make sure this edge here is rounded. It can't be pointy. Leaving too much of a pencil point risks cutting the rubber band. Let's move on to the second part, which is making the handle of the machine gun. I'm using here a pipe of 23, 10 and 10, three elbows, a T and a cross fitting. I just need to glue the pipes together. I'll make the bottom part first and then the top part to fit them together. Dummy, this was supposed to be facing up, so what I'm gonna do now is a fix to try to turn this thing down. Let's go, cut the pipe, sand it, glue the coupling on one side and glue the coupling on the other. I almost welded it upside down again. Finally, I'm going to fit the top part onto the bottom part. You notice that the top part has to fit exactly onto the bottom part. If I make this part here a little longer than the bottom part, it won't fit or it'll all end up crooked. Now let's start working with the little pipes that are 20 millimeters in diameter. This one, which is 70 centimeters long, is the main shaft of our machine gun. It's the one that will connect this part to this one here. I'm going to glue a coupling on the end of the pipe and then cut off the leftover part because I just want to use a little ring. Look how cool this is now. I'm going to put the shaft inside the drum and I'm also going to put the shaft inside the handle. So I'll already have a machine gun spinning here. The only thing is that this part hits my finger, see? So I have to put a spacer here. I'll use this 4 centimeter spacer, which is a bigger pipe, right? The 25 pipe. And I think even so, there will still be some pipe left. Let's see. Yeah, there was a little margin of error here. Look. Now I'm going to have to install a wire guide that will be attached here. 
I'm going to take a piece of pipe that's three centimeters long and glue it to the T. Then I'm gonna make a hole right on this little mark here using an eight millimeter drill bit. Then I glue the T to the handle of the machine gun with the hole facing forward and I glue a seven centimeter pipe to one of the T's outlets. Only one simple thing remains, which is the crank that goes here. So I'm gonna get a three centimeter T piece and two two centimeter pieces. Place one on each side of the T. Finally, sand it down to level and smooth it out. This 20 millimeter pipe, 5.9 inches long, will support the crankshaft. It goes in here and I put these little pipes, glued these little pipes inside so the shaft doesn't get loose. I'll glue a coupling on the shaft's end and cut off the excess, leaving only the small ring. Now comes the tricky part. Look, the shaft is nice here and we're gonna have to attach this can to the shaft. But I'm gonna have to cut a piece because the can has to fit exactly here, still leaving a little bit to put the elbow on. I need a 2.36 inches tall can. First, I'll remove the can's bottom and take out the cardboard inside. Then I'll mark 2.16535 feet using a ruler. Slightly smaller than needed, mark with tape and cut using a utility knife. I'm going to put tape one more time to secure the bottom of the can and use hot glue inside so it stays really well attached. Now the tricky part is making two holes right in the center of these circles to pass the axle through. On this piece, the center is marked, so it's easier. I put a pipe on top, I can check if it's right in the center and trace around it. Then I put the plastic cap here on the shaft first and fix it with hot glue. A seven centimeter pipe goes into this elbow. Then another elbow. I'll use a 3.74 inches pipe surrounded by a 0.98 inches diameter, 2.76 inches long sleeve pipe. Finally, I'll close it with a coupling. The crank turned out great. The pipe allows for a steady hand while still spinning. I plan to reinforce the connection between the metal and polyvinyl chloride pipe with some hot glue. Remember that this part here is fixed. The shaft won't spin here in contact with the metal. Finally, I'll be able to attach the whole crank assembly to the machine gun handle. Ah, Natan, this turned out even cooler than I imagined, huh? An important adjustment here. The wire will go through this little hole, pass inside the barrel, and will be wound onto this kind of reel here. The barrel is too long and will extend past the reel. Ideally, it should end exactly in the middle of the can. Before we finally get started, I think it's worth painting this part here. I'm going to remove these marking tapes that were helping me remember where each piece goes. After that, just spray over it, being careful not to put too much paint on the parts that spin. Let's put in the last piece, which is the wire. This is what's going to pull off the rubber bands. I'm going to make a little hole here near the end of a pipe and tie the end of the string. The other end, I... Then I pass it through that hole that's here in the front and then through the mouth of the pipe. Then I tie it to the can and wind up all the string. It's ready. How do we carry this thing? I'm going to pull a strap from the front here, put it over one of these elastic supports and put an elastic band over it. Then I wrap the wire all around, keeping it close to the edge. When it goes over the elastic again, I secure it with another elastic band. Then the next step is to put an elastic band on each of the tubes. One cool thing is that we've already cut these tubes to a size where the elastic band gets really stretched and sometimes even snaps. You'll reach a point where all the tubes have an elastic band. So if I turned this crank, the machine gun would fire 12 shots because it has 12 barrels. The process can be repeated multiple times. Turn it once, load the elastic, fill everything with the elastic, turn it again, and repeat. I wound the string eight times. Times 12 barrels, that's 96. I added four more elastics. We have 100 elastics to shoot. As I pull the string, it will pull the elastic from here and release one, two, three, and so on. Looks like
like we need glue. The string probably got caught in the polyvinyl chloride and broke the crank handle. It cut the polyvinyl chloride went in and got stuck. We need to put some protection here so the string doesn't tear. I'm going to put a piece of metal here, so I'll make two little holes and run a wire through. Another thing I noticed while watching the footage in slow motion. There were times when the machine gun jammed and the rubber band couldn't come out, and suddenly it would release and shoot a bunch at once. So I'm gonna try to sand down the spot where the rubber band was getting stuck. And let's reload everything again, that one without the rubber band. Now here goes one, two, three, and... If you're new here, subscribe to Manual Do Mundo because, look, this is the second one we've already made. If you always come by here and don't give a like, look. Let's see how long the grinder ran before its battery died. Look, it starts at 26. It ended at 31, 100 rubber bands in 5 seconds. Dividing that by 5, that's 20 rubber bands per second. Did you think the title was clickbait? No, it's not. If you're going to make one of these at home, it's a lot of work, but the materials are cheap and very easy to find. Don't forget to tag us on Instagram, post a picture there so we can see it.